Well, it is Palm Sunday. Holy and gracious God, we gather to welcome your blessed Son into our midst today with joy and hope. May he abide with us and we with him. Help us to praise and adore him and you, not just for this day, but now and forever. Hosanna in the highest. Now, this is an unexpected situation because the first attempt I made at creating a Palm Sunday sermon presentation was one of the worst things I have ever seen in my life. And that's saying a lot. What happened was I was trying to be creative and it is as if all of my quirks and <laughs> got together and made a movie. Um, I tried to use the idea of uh, the rocks crying out, which we have talked about before. On a Palm Sunday, because it is such a familiar story, I like to try to find something unique that we can relate to. That's the kind of a person I am. I've been in the church all of my life, and I've loved the church all of my life. And I like it when what we talk about is real and reaches us where we live, not just in this beautiful place, but in the world. You know the story, it's in a number of the Gospels, but uh, Jesus and the disciples are finally heading toward Jerusalem, and they go over the hill, the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sends two disciples ahead in order to find a donkey to be ridden. And so it is a borrowed donkey, a borrowed colt. And uh, he throws a cloak on it and rides it into Jerusalem. As he grows closer, the crowds gather and they shout out and they spread their cloaks and they, they pull the leaves off of the palm trees and they put them on the road to celebrate his entry. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory to God in the highest. And some of the Pharisees said to the crowd and to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And that's the word of the Lord. That's our story for today. And so at different times during my many years in ministry and in the church, I have looked at different elements of that story. And we talked about the idea of a borrowed cult. The idea that when we give Jesus what we have, he gives it back to us, only blessed. You cannot outgive Jesus. And that's, that's the truth. And that's a wonderful you know, that's a wonderful metaphor. Uh, another metaphor, which I was going to use this year and we have done before, is the idea of the rocks crying out. And I see that throughout the Bible. There are so many times when we see this element of the rock strength, um, where Jacob lays his head or where Moses finds water miraculously in the desert, or even the rock what was in the hand of the man who wanted to punish the woman caught in sin. And each one of those has a story, as does the rock along the way where Jesus is finally entering Jerusalem. But I thought about it a lot. And as you can see, this year is different. I'm in our beautiful sanctuary, and I am uh, here with my husband, Richard, Pastor Richard, and um, it's just us. We didn't expect it. And in all my years in ministry, I don't think I ever got myself ready for something like this. And so we did a, a cute little, little filmed a cute little uh, metaphor of the rocks talking, and it turned out so badly that it's hilarious. Okay, you can beg me to see it because you will love it. It is hilarious, hilariously <laughs> bad. But my intent was good, you know that. We like to be creative. And we like this to be real, to be real for the disciples who walk this Christian walk. This year, I decided maybe the metaphor is the journey. We are on a journey that we did not expect as disciples of Jesus. Maybe it's always been true. Those early disciples, they followed him from place to place and learned about him and they saw the miracles and they experienced the blessings and then finally, finally, they know that they're headed toward where they were always meant to go and that is Jerusalem. And big things are going to happen in Jerusalem. Problem is, they don't know what. 
They have their idea of what that is, and we have our idea of where we are going on our Christian walk, and in the church even. They draw near to Jerusalem, not knowing what's ahead. And even those crowds, and I've used that as a metaphor in sermons, the crowds who gathered, they had their idea, they had their expectation of what they wanted from Jesus. They had their expectation. And what we see in retrospect is that the expectation was too small, too low. However, this is the beginning of Holy Week. And this week, those early disciples will walk through a difficult week. You know what? We will too. We will too, not only in our, our re, uh, reimagining of that, that Holy Week, but in the world that we're living in right now. We are living in a world where we are all fighting the coronavirus, a pandemic that has affected everyone in the world. And that's why we're here on our own. Now the church is people, again, not the sanctuary, but this is where we gather. And all my life, this is where I've come. When I needed something, when I felt broken, it was the place that offered me hope and comfort, and I needed it. Maybe, maybe you're that kind of a person too. I lost my family when I was fairly young. And my sister, not all that many years ago, 10 years ago, but I had the church. That was the place I would come. And I think because of that, I had expectations of what I was to the church. I would serve the church, and that's a wonderful thing for all of us to do. I would give to the church, and that's a good thing too. We need to do that. We're serving people. But I had expectations all along the way. And today, I think, I feel, having been absolutely broken this week, I feel that it is now about the journey, just like those early disciples. We didn't imagine. The journey is one that takes us to places we didn't want to go and didn't expect. The journey is one that challenges our idea of what we can do for God, for Jesus, and who he is in our life. The journey is one that allows us to look at the church differently now. We need it. It's precious. And it's precious because it is here not just for us as individuals or this generation, but it is alive and it is always here because Jesus is here. It's Palm Sunday. I actually like Palm Sunday. That's, a, that's an unusual holiday to really enjoy, but I do. I think because it reminds me that we always stand on that precipice of what might happen, where Jesus is going, and I always felt as though I had this part. I had this part in, in the journey that he was on and, and the service that he was giving. But what happens when, when we need so much? When we are broken by the things we see in the world that we cannot control, and yet we are still the church, and this is still a place of hope, it's been a tough week. I think it's been a tough week for all of us. And I just wanted to speak to you, just you and I as Christian people on this Palm Sunday, where we look through this Holy Week and anticipate a great blessing that Jesus promised. Well, we know the end of the story. We do not know the end of the story that we are walking through right now. Everyone tries to be very upbeat, and that's good, and we try to see the good and the hope and the possibilities in it, but I'm telling you, we are going to walk through a very difficult time. And we need each other to remember that that's part of the journey, that you are not going to fix it, and I'm not going to fix it, and it is in God's hands, and it is in Jesus' hands, and he will give us hope, but we will not always understand what he is doing. Just ask those first disciples. He told them what he was doing and they still didn't understand. Jesus tells us throughout the scripture and in our prayer and in our, on our time together that, that he's leading us and that we don't always understand. And that whatever we're going through, whatever is happening, we still have hope. 
when I was very young, my father was dying of an inoperable, incurable form of brain cancer. And, and the doctor, even though I was a teenager, told me and I needed to tell my dad. And I remember the doctor grabbing me by the shoulders and saying to me, don't have hope. Don't have hope. And I look back and I realize the doctor didn't understand what hope meant to me. I'd been raised in a Christian home where hope didn't mean that we had control of anything. But hope meant that we believed that there was something good in everything. And there was something larger than us than, that as we went through this experience and as I went through the experience with my father passing from this world to the next, there was almost nothing but hope. It was hard and it was painful, but I never felt alone. And I always had the church. I had other Christians like you. This week, I wish I could be all things to all people. And maybe more than anything, it made me see clearly, see clearly how broken we can be. I see people who are ill around the world, children who've lost their parents. We're living in a new place where we feel separated. Sometimes it's hard and we need to share resources. There's anger and misunderstanding. And yet through it all, there is hope. Ultimately, that's the journey we're walking. While we can sing, our Palm Sunday songs, and I have I put a little video of uh, us singing, Gary Filbert, who's just wonderful singing, that'll lift up your day. Today, I could only think of one song that I really felt was honest enough for me to sing. I hope you enjoy it too. May the blessings of this week be upon you. May you remember that you are loved as you are. And the journey, as difficult as it may be, is never alone. I'm praying for you and sending you love and hope. We ask all this in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.